Greetings everyone, Archimedes here, and welcome back to another Brickfield LEGO video. Today, on our Taking Back Technic series, we'll be taking a look at one of the most binding pieces in the your any LEGO Technic collection, the pin. Just to remind you, some of, the, some of these beginning Taking Back Technic videos may be a little uh, simpler than some of our previous videos, but it's simply because I want to lay a baseline, a foundation for your Technic collection. Now, if you already know this stuff, you, you may want to look, take a look at some of the later episodes, but even if you're a genius at Technic pin building, it can often be good to be refreshed and see what's really in your LEGO collection. So let's get started. First thing we're going to be looking at is the basic 1x2 friction Technic pin. If you build anything in your Technic collection, you are going to need black 1x2 Technic friction pins. These are essential to any design, simply because they are they can easily fuse two beams together the cross holes as you can see it right here fit in and they can attach them easily in the same family as the 1x2 friction technic pin there is the 1x2 gray non friction pin now non friction pins work very similarly to friction pins as you can see they clip into beams just the same as the non-friction pin, or the friction pin. However, non-friction pins don't hold the other members set steady so they can rotate freely, whereas friction pins provide some effort. You have to take some effort to turn this. So, what is the purpose of these two distinct members? Well, friction pin design is used if you want to make a slightly more solid creation especially if you're going to be building a frame or something. While if you want some sort of moving timber, especially something that moves freely or spins, non-friction pins are the tool to look for. Next, we have the 1x3 friction and non-friction pins. As you can see here, they are three beams wide, so you can make sandwiches. Instead of just having Two, beam, two beams clipped together, you can now clip together three beams, like this. If, for example, you built a frame using only 1x2 pins and clipped your beam on top here, you'll see that you wouldn't be able to clip any other members to the points where the pins were. Whereas here, if you use a 1x3 pin, you can clip a joint off next to the frame. So th this adds a lot more possibilities. These 1x3 pins come in friction and non-friction versions. Now, just something to take a note of. Usually, when LEGO makes a friction pin of any kind, they design it and they color it in black or blue. While if they make a non-friction pin, they'll color it in light gray or perhaps tan. So, if you're quickly digli digging through your Technic collection, trying to find the correct piece, just looking for darker or lighter colors will help you quickly determine which kind of pin type to grab. Now, I just want to quickly review something before we continue. As you can see here, we have these 1x2 axles, which we looked at in a previous episode. Now, I almost consider 1x2 axles a type of pin, since just like Technic pins, like the friction pins, can clip two beams together, these 1x2 axles can clip two cross hole members together. Now we'll take a look at the equally important crossover pin. Now this pin is a combination of a cross um, pin on one side and a normal pin on the other side. So you could attach a normal beam together with a lift arm like this. This crossover pin is the best of both worlds. Of the pin 
and the Axle Worlds. It really enables you to add a few more details into your models. Just like normal pins, there are friction and non-friction versions of these crossover pins. So far, we've taken a look at some of the most basic pins. The normal 1x2 friction and non-friction pins, the 1x3 pins, friction and non-friction, the 1x2 axle, which I think could be called a pin, and the crossover pins, which are a combination of cross hole and pin. Now let's take a look at some of the stranger members of the pin family. The first strange pin is this little runty thing here. As you can see, it will clip into a beam on one side, but on the other side, there's a protrusion that looks familiar, doesn't it? If you thought that it looked like a stud, you're right. As you can see, these pins act as a combination in between a beam and a stud. So, you can attach plates or bricks to the side of a beam, like this. I find this idea particularly effective if you want to add some Lego pieces to a Technic model, especially as some light detail. They also can be used in conjunction with a crossover Technic beam to act as a sideways building piece, as seen here. This next pin we're looking at is even stranger. As you can see, this pin once again has space for a beam on one side, but this time it protrudes out just enough to attach a half beam on the other side. If you want to attach a half beam to some part of a beam width model, you can simply attach a couple of these pegs, clip that half beam on, and voila, a very stable half beam to beam conversion. These strange runty pegs like this can all also act similarly to the 1x3 beam width pins like these. So as you can see, you can pin together, sandwich together, three different beams like this, while with this runty peg, you can pin together three half beams like this. Sometimes if you want a smaller, more compact creation, this kind of building can work very effectively. Now, at first glance, these 1x3 cross hole to pin connectors may look very similar to a 1x3 pin. However, if you'll take notice, these pins have two spaces for beams on them, like this, and then also have an opening for a cross hole on the other side, so you can attach an axle beam inside there. This little hole inside can prove particularly effective if you want to attach some sort of detailed piece, like this fire sword here, or if you wanted to add another uh, small Lego detail in there, perhaps some sort of gun or blaster. Now we have the ball pin. As you can see, this particular piece has a Technic pin on one side and this little ball protrusion on the other side. This ball can be used for two purposes that I know of at least. One, you can use it to attach a rubber band around to hold it in place. The other purpose is even more interesting. Now, in your Technic collection, you may have some elements like this. These strange sort of beams with these little holes in them. If you look, you see you can't attach any normal pin in them just doesn't work. They don't clip in. However, these balls fit perfectly to the round holes, allow this strange multi-angle motion like this. We'll go into more detail on these pieces in a later episode, but let's just put it for now that these particular kind of pins can clip into the holes next to them. These ball pins come in both pin type and also in a cross hole type, in case you should want to affix them in, onto a lift arm, for example. Finally, we have the super pins. Now, 
These are combination pin beam designs that LEGO kind of fused together to create single member pieces that are very sturdy, can be used to make very big and powerful constructions. You can see the middle two members are three studs long, the same length as a one by three pin. How, and they are either two or three beams wide. The smaller super pins, as you can see here, which kind of look like binoculars, have connections on both sides, which make them very useful for attaching two beams together sturdily without the use for these one by three pins. They also have the added advantage of adding a cross hole to your model which can be very useful in some contexts. The three hole wide super pins here are pretty much just that, very similar. Once again, you can pin two beams together. However, as you can see here, there are holes here instead. So you could clip pins onto here to add a multi-angled Technic model, as you can see, something like this. These can also be customized for extra strength you can see there's a hole here by simply throwing in another another one by three friction pin in the middle here. Now, as you can see, there are three pins on each side, which makes this incredibly sturdy. If you were to clip two beams together with this now, they will not separate unless under extreme duress. Finally, we have the angled super pins. As you can see, they form a right angle, have pins on each angle with holes here and on the insides too. So you can use this to set Technic beams off at a right angle. This is incredibly useful if you're building any sort of supporting frame. And it, this sort of piece has really expanded the possibilities of your Technic models. Just like the one by three hole super pins, these right angle super pins can be strengthened by attaching a pin in the hole on each side here. Once again, making three pins on each side and making it much stronger. For today, we talked about pins. We talked about some of the simple pins, and there are two usually different variations. The friction pins, which were black or blue, and the non-friction pins, which were gray or tan. We talked about crossover pins which span the gap between pin hole and, cro and cross hole. We talked about one by two cross hole pins, which, at least in my mind, I consider pins, even though they're axles. We also looked at the stranger types of pins, pins that were more specialized for certain occasions. We looked at pins that could transform between brick and beam. We took a look at pins that would that could cross over between half beam and beam. We talked about specialized pins that could hold certain types of members. And finally, we talked about super pins, pin beam combinations, which Lego fused together to great, create incredibly power, powerful members, which we can use in strong creations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this video. I hope that it was interesting, or informative, or at least that it entertained you for a little while. If you did in fact like this video, please comment, rate, or subscribe. If you didn't like this video, still please comment and rate, and if you want, still please subscribe to me. I want to hear what you think would make this channel different and better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you all farewell. My name is Archimedes36, and I'll see you next Sunday.